passionate about what I'm doing, and uh, but I just mainly want to let the church know that I can't do this alone. I need your help. I need this church's help, and it takes. And you may feel like uh, you can't help. You may feel like there's nothing that you can do to. Uh, you don't know anything about addiction. You don't know anything about anything. But I feel we're all in recovery. Uh, from the fall of man, from Adam and Eve, from the very beginning. So every one of us has got something to share in our life to do with aspects of recovery. Maybe not drugs and alcohol. That's where I feel like I'm really called into is drugs and alcohol because that's where a lot of my experiences come from. But uh, there's no spiritual giants required. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth on him shall live and have eternal life. Sometimes we continue... We conclude that God has called for a few believers into service. This ministry is a few, has, a, has a few spiritual giants, while the rest of us are reluctant to sit on the sidelines. Some rather minister to others' needs, will pass, them, will pass them on to others and neglect the fact that they can minister to other people. We may also feel because we are flawed that God cannot really use us in any kind of way, so you forfeit your blessings that comes with ministry to others because... You believe that God uses only the perfect, the near perfect of those who are called ordained ministers. In my life as well, in reading the Bible, I have seen nothing but the opposite to be true. God, God often uses those who have major flaws, major difficulties, and have been through a great deal of pain to accomplish things of his kingdom. Looking at Moses, the stutterer, Michael Tate, the stutterer, uh, David, the adulterer, uh, Rahab the prostitute, Peter the denial of Christ, Paul the persecutors of Christians. <clears throat> no one is messed up, too messed up for God to use. And no task is unimportant no, mat no to the matter to God. Don't miss out the opportunity to be a, a help to other people because you may feel like you're flawed or you can't do something or, or whatever. God can always use you. Uh, now, that being said, I, I've gotten a lot of questions about the different ministries. You guys see me wear this vest right here on my, on my back into the church, and I, and I ride my motorcycle and all that stuff. And, and I don't ride a motorcycle because I'm thinking I'm big and bad, and I don't ride a motorcycle because I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. I ride this motorcycle right here because it's an outreach. It's a tool. God blessed me with this motorcycle at a time that I didn't even hardly have any money to, to uh, rake two pennies together, and God blessed me with this motorcycle. My wife's sitting here today, and she knows uh, I was fortunate, got a good deal on the bike, so I gave it to God, and when I, when I got the motorcycle, uh, several months after going to a meeting at the UPC Church in Jacksonville, Texas, it was Azusa Street Riders were there, they were doing a prayer run, and a prayer run consists of uh, the pastor mapping out the town, strongholds in the town, uh, uh, devil worshiping churches, drug houses, drug buying communities, uh, church, uh, other churches from other denominational churches, from the school to the, to the uh, troubled school campuses and all that. The pastor of Jacksonville mapped out a map that he wanted all of us, the Zuda Street Riders himself and members of the church to go to these facilities and pray over these churches and anoint the doorposts and all these institutions. So that's how I got involved with this. I went there, I saw it, and uh, God just really impressed on me that I wanted to be a part of this. And not even a month later, God blessed me with this motorcycle. So anyways, I want to tell you about Azusa Street. Azusa Street uh, is an international recognized one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy roly baptism in Jesus' name field, Holy Ghost motorcycle ministry. For 10, for 10 years now, the Azusa Street ministry has been spread the one God message through motorcycle community all over the world and brings awareness to a lot of Christ, the oneness of Christ in many ways of salvation that can be reached no other way. Just last weekend, uh, Brother Earp and Brother Bolenbacher and, uh, and some other ministers went down and they did a biker church and there was over 200 one percenter biker groups in this church and he has pictures of 90% of these one, one percenters standing up in church raising their hand as the praise team was praising and worshiping. And several of the one percenter biker groups came to the altar and, and prayed through in the altar. So that's what this group is about right here. Uh, not only that, uh, Zuzu Street Riders are involved in a world ride of activities such as raising funds for Lighthouse Boys Ranch. And uh, I believe Brother Dago and Sister Dago may be a little bit of, uh, involved. I know somebody that was involved in that. I spoke with Brother Daigle 
I think a guy, a, a brother is married to his aunt that used to be kind of over the Boys Lighthouse Ministry. Uh, the Boys Lighthouse Ministry is a uh, something that I'm very passionate about also, but it says the Lighthouse Ministry was founded in 1979 by Jim and Loving Yo. It is located in 40 acres in South Louisiana. More than a thousand boys have lived there, benefited from the program since it was founded. The Lighthouse Ranch uh, for Boys in Louisiana is a licensed type four residential facility located in Longer, Louisiana. The program is designed for boys 12 to 17 years old who need a stable environment. Many of the boys who came to the ranch were victims of abuse, neglect, addiction, unstable home environments, which led them to development of, uh, of manipulated behaviors. Our, their support team provides a safe, stable, nurturing environment for both of these, for both boys uh, that need security and a stable focus on choices of improvement. They also do academical stuff. They work with the boys. Uh, it's a wonderful program. They, uh, it's, it's a oneness program. They, they, it's Christ-centered. They preach Jesus Christ, baptism in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost filled, and, and uh, so it's a wonderful program. The Azusa Street Riders support that. Not only do we support that, we support uh, uh, wounded warriors. We various vi uh, veterans groups. Azusa Street holds a Bind the Strongman conference. It's an all-night prayer meeting where Jesus Christ has done miraculous things for the ministry and souls. One of the greatest obstacles of the Azusa Street ministry program has been to give the One God Apostolic Foreign Missions motorcycles. So we, we raise money to give motorcycles overseas to missionaries overseas that don't have any other way of getting back to the woods and into places they need to go. We furnish, we get them ATVs, we get them dirt bikes, we get them four wheelers, whatever we can give them as tools, we raise money for that and send it to foreign missions. Azusa Street Riders has 250 missionaries all over the world right now as we speak. Uh, and then we do events for local chapters. It goes towards making ourselves available to the lost that might otherwise be uh, not have the opportunity to receive uh, a message of the oneness of God by wearing this patch. If you notice, this patch right here has on it our, our Acts 2.38, and that's what we believe in. In order to be a member of Azusa Street Riders, an application is presented to your pastor. Uh, you must be a tithe, faithful in tithing. You must do, pay your offering. You must have the Holy Ghost. You must adhere to the doctrines of the oneness of God. If, if none of those things all fall in the category, then you can't be an Azusa Street Rider. So there's stipulations to this. All right, so now, everybody, anybody have any questions or want to ask me anything about the Azusa Street Riders and why, it's, why I do what I do with that situation? And, and also, I just want to let the church know that you all are involved in anything the Azusa Street Riders do. You don't have to be a member to come to the events. You don't have to ride a motorcycle to come to the events. You don't even have to own a motorcycle to become a member if it was something that Brother Hargrave or you feel like that God's impressing on your heart to, to be a member. Uh, I am wanting to start a chapter in Trinity, Texas because there is no chapter here. It takes four, four, four paying dues members and those dues, like I said, go towards the things that I just talked about. Uh, so that's that. All right, so now to the Upper Room Recovery Group. The Upper Room Recovery Group is a program that is designed to uh, educate, number one. I believe education about addiction is our very first goal in, in this program. And, and I see a whole row of young children right here, a whole row of youth over here that's sitting on church pews that I was raised on. I got the Holy Ghost when I was 10 years old. But getting the Holy Ghost at 10 years old didn't stop me from the snares of this world. It didn't stop the devil from fighting me. It didn't stop what was going on in my home. It didn't, it didn't answer all the questions that I had. And back whenever I was your age, they preached against everything but air. And the grace of God was very seldom came across the pulpit. And that's just a fact. If you had an issue or a problem, you was either going to hell or you was going to go to heaven. There was no... There was no room for error, and that's the error that I grew up in. My grandmother was a pastor of a non-denominational uh, uh, oneness church. I grew up oneness all my life, but it wasn't until I was in my 30s sitting in a prison cell after doing four and a half years and living in gangs and addiction and all that that I prayed and cried out to God to show me who he really was. I, I didn't have the revelation of Jesus Christ. I just knew that there was right or wrong, and there was a God up there. If I didn't do right, he was going to pounce me in the head with a hammer. And that's the way I believe. And you young people need to understand this. And please pay very close attention to Brother Tate. 
I'm 55 years old and I stand in front of you today with a lot of wasted years. You guys are sitting in a prime, prime situation in your life right now that you can do so many things for God, so much more than I could ever think about doing for God. God will use you. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what your ethical background is, what your, what your education is, how much money you have, how poor you are, or how rich you are. Each one of you sitting here today have a work to do for God. And the only way you're going to do that is by listening to this pastor, your youth leaders, your, your Sunday school department. And I'm here to tell you right now that I struggled at 16 years old with, with things that I kept falling into. And I didn't have a, somebody to turn to. I didn't have a, a dad in church. I didn't have my grandpa. He, was, he, he hated church. I've seen him come in and drag my grandmother out of church, cussing her and slapping her around physically in a church building. I physically saw these things happen. I saw my grandpa get shot in the gut with a pistol. I physically saw my stepdad shoot my grandpa. This is the way I grew up. But I'm telling you today that you have somebody that cares about you. And it don't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with, with pornography, if you're dealing with cutting on yourself. And cutting on yourself is a real thing. Cutting on yourself, kids cut on themselves because they want to feel, they want to get rid of their emotional pain that they're feeling inside. And they feel if they cut themselves, they feel a different pain, and it takes away from the emotional pain they're feeling, and they feel physical pain. I've even had kids tell me they cut on themselves because they want to see blood run out of them so that they know they're still a real person, that they still bleed like everybody else. These things are real, and I'm here to tell you that this Upper Room New Life Recovery Group, outside of your leaders you have here, and God has put good leaders in your way, but Brother Tate is here, and I will listen to you, and I will not judge you. I will not tell anyone what you share with me. I will take it to the Lord in prayer, and I will help you overcome these things in your life. This program... Uh, This program isn't just for 50-year-old men, 100-year-old men, or 20-year-old women. This program is for anyone. It's for 5-years-old, 10-year-old, 6-year-old, 7-year-old, all the way to 100. This program is here to design to help you get over the emotional pains and stuff that you're dealing with and you don't know how to get, get over them. The Holy Ghost gives you power to live for God and we can't live without the Holy Ghost. We have to have the Holy Ghost. We can't make it to heaven without the Holy Ghost. But we still have a human side of things. When we're fiercely filled, we still have a human body we have to deal with. And sometimes it takes a little bit more to somebody that's been there can deal with that. And I want you to know Brother Tate is here. And that's what this group is about. This group is about touching this community to let all these people stick the needles in their arms, drinking the beer, and, and going through all the emotional pain. But not only that, it's here to deal with cell phones. It's here to deal with social media. It's here to deal with, with all the aspects that you're facing in school. It's to deal with those things. You may think, oh, that, that group is not for me. I'm not an addict. I don't drink, and I don't smoke, and I, and I don't do drugs. But I'm going to tell you, there's probably 80% of us in here that need to get off these cell phones, need to get off this social media. We get on there. We're, we got legitimate reasons to be there because I'm trying to find a car part. Next thing you know, you're looking for this part, that part, that part, and you're way over here, and you're not even looking for the car part no more. Those are addictive behaviors that take over us. And we get angry. Even as kids, you guys get angry. When that thing overtakes you, you get mad at yourself, and you lash out. And problematic behaviors is what we call it. And this program is designed to help you get over the problematic behaviors, the different things in this world that seem innocent, get a hold of us and tangle us up into a web till we feel like we got no way out. Well, I'm telling you now, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and this upper room recovery group, you have a way out. You have no excuse after today. This, this group launches April the 2nd at 7 p.m. The best thing you guys can do for me at this point is tell everybody. Tell everybody about this group. Tell them. The group will start at 7 o'clock and it end at 8 p.m. It's a one-hour group. It's going to be every Thursday and every Tuesday from 7 to 8. I will be here. Brother Cody will be here. Sister Julie in the back corner back there will be here. That's how I first started launching this group, talking about Brother Hargrave about the group. I prayed and asked God. I said, Lord, I need people. I need help. I need you to send somebody my way. And Julie approached me. I didn't approach her. I didn't know nothing about her life. And she approached me right here in the church and said, I feel like I want to be part of this group. And as I got to know her and learned things about her, I said, you're perfect for this group. And Brother Cody the same way. He's perfect for this group. And everyone in this room is perfect for this group. Uh, and Sister Deborah, I want to thank you personally. I'm telling you, <laughs> my family love you. Uh, your name is mentioned so many times at my home. 
you've gone out of your way to help me get everything I needed and anything I needed I asked you and you was right on top of it no delays no nothing and I appreciate that thank you I love this church praise God there's a hurting world out there there are people that are faced with forces that causes them to go into deep depression and then become utterly oppressed as well but I can assure you man that God is a deliverer from it all just in the past week Congress and I believe the Senate has been meeting to vote TikTok out to ban it completely from the US now I don't know what your personal thoughts or feelings are in regard to that but I'll express mine TikTok needs to be out. It really does. And now the reason being is because it is addictive. And it's so addictive to the point of which that when various ones found out, and I'm going to tell you, they found out through an outside source that came into this country saying, you need to tell your congressmen, you need to tell your congresswomen, you need to tell your senators to keep TikTok in. And some of them called saying, I'm going to commit suicide if you take TikTok out, if you ban TikTok. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that if you ban TikTok. I'm going to tell you, that is a controlling factor that has misled our young people into believing that that's their source of hope. Amen. Oh, God help us today. Social media is not your source of hope. It's certainly not your source of help. Amen. And there is a reason why the Bible explicitly states that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is. Seeing that that day is rapidly approaching, amen. Honey, I'm going to tell you right now, we need to gather together like, Noah, at, like at no other time. If for no other reason, amen, it's to be of help to each other. And certainly direct, amen, each other back to Calvary where our source of life really comes from, amen. Why don't we all stand to our feet, if we will? Amen. Ah, oh, yes. I want us, from the very offset, to uh, keep Brother David Little and Lord lifted up to the Lord in prayer. I'm just, we'll announce that. Uh, but we will now enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, being thankful un unto him, glorifying his precious name. Let's enter into his presence with singing, shall we? Amen. Lifting our voice in song. Uh, praise be unto the King.
Praise his name. Praise that name that is above every name. That lovely name, the name Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My, my, my. I feel liberty here this morning. Amen. There is freedom here to express yourself. Amen. And to express yourself through that of sincere, heartfelt praise and worship. I trust that everyone will seize hold of the liberty that God has granted. Uh, amen. For where his spirit is, there is liberty. Brother Cottrell, if you will, amen, let's come and take up our morning offering. Let's give and give as unto the Lord. And everyone say in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. It's the only way to give. We praise that name. Praise that name. Pray God's blessings upon this gift and offering, Brother Cottrell.
Turn me up, Brother Jamie. Turn me up. I, I feel this in the spirit right now. The only thing I want for us to do right now is to echo forth praise and worship to the King of Kings. There's more than once for which that the word of the Lord declares that we are to be still and see the salvation of God. Amen. I want no music playing, no singing taking place. I just want us, amen, as God's children to stretch forth our hands and, and reach out toward the heavens right now. Come on, let's allow for ourselves to entertain the presence of the Lord, his Shekinah glory within our midst right now in Jesus' name. Huh? Be still. There's healing in the house. There's deliverance here to be found of them that want it. Huh? Reach out and receive it. Peel after the Lord. You'll find he's not far from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Uh, receive, receive, receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah. sickness flee from this place come against every spirit of opposition every force of darkness to by that of the authoritative power of his precious name and by that of the glory of God amen we pronounce victory we declare salvation in Jesus name yeah Andaria no boshata kata yolo robo se. Oh, we have time. In the name of Jesus. Ah. Well, someone's on the brink of experiencing a victory right now. Hallelujah. Someone's on the brink of experiencing and encountering their healing right now. That standstill statement of Moses took place before the drowning of an Egyptian army. It took place before the parting of waters. Amen. Stand still and see. Amen. Come on, let's see the salvation of God at work within our midst right now. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Receive it. Well, let your testimony today be of that that you've received of the Lord. Amen. Come on, Deidre. Ha. 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 Ha
Ah, in the name of the Lord.
There is space, there is room for all to experience healing and deliverance here today. The hour is growing late. It's at nine to noon. And I've debated. And I had prayed from within whether I should deliver what I feel is a word from God. The Spirit of the Lord has moved within our midst. And, and I'm going to preach not today but tonight the message that the Lord has laid upon my heart. And I know that there are some that may be here. You may not so much as show up here this evening, but I want to encourage you to be here. The title of the message really is, Can You Still Hear the Great I Am in the Midst of Self-Righteousness? And uh, I'm going to deal with Moses. And he asked the question, who shall I say sent me? And the Lord's response was, tell them I am that I am. But prior to that, we find to where Moses asked the question, who am I? Who am I? So I'm just, just, I'm just giving you a little food for thought, some thought to ponder in, in heart and mind. And if you want to know what the message is about, I'm just going to encourage you to be here tonight. And I can assure you it will be one that will be a blessing to us all if we permit it to be. Appreciate the spirit of the Lord that we have felt here this morning, moving within our midst in the manner of which he has. Appreciate the passion that this church has, the desire that you have to see lost souls saved and delivered. Appreciate the passion that you have to see and witness the miraculous take place. And some says, well, yet, I've not yet seen what I've been longing to see. That doesn't keep me from searching. <laughs> Brother Cottrell, we may even so much as question at times, why not? But in the midst of our questioning, God is still asking us, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hmm. I better be careful. I just appreciate the passion that we have for the souls of them that are bound by addictions. I told Brother Tate, I can't hardly relate to what a drug addict goes through. I can't so much as relate to that of which... One has been bound and bound to alcoholism. I can't say that I haven't taken a drag on a cigarette because I did only to choke and find out that, that it wasn't meant for me, that was for sure. I even sipped on my granddaddy's beer without my dad knowing. My granddad was giving me a taste of his old filthy taste in beer. I can tell you right now, you have to an acquire a feeling and taste for these things. But Brother Cottrell, when it comes to tasting Jesus, <laughs> it's like honey out of the rock. Taste and see that the Lord, he is good. It's what we want for others that are bound to these addictions to experience, to encounter for themselves. We want for our children to learn what it's like at a young age to taste from the fount of water that flows freely. Amen. I want to tell you, a church that doesn't have children and young people in it is a dying church. And I'm going to ask that you elders be patient with these young people and these children. There are occasions to which that we fail to remember where we once were. I have to remind myself quite often, quite frequently, of what my youthful life was like. Especially when I have to deal with my nephew, Riley Dean. I 
I do. I have to remind myself quite frequently. But you know, upon reminding myself, Sister Brenda Smith, I can relate to how far God has brought me from to where I am now. <laughs> Amen. And I wouldn't trade what I've experienced today and, and what I have come to know now for anything of yesterday or yesteryear. Amen. Say thank you for being faithful to the church house today, to this place of gathering. I would encourage all of you. I want to say it is a blessing to see Brother Cloyd. Amen better than what he had been he did have a heart attack they did diagnose that the situation that, that occurred was a heart attack but to god be the glory there's no heart damage amen thank the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus and uh we'll continue to pray for my mother we'll continue to pray for brother hugo we're going to continue to lift, lift each other up to the Lord in prayer, being mindful of all and everyone's needs. Amen. You hear me. When you can yield and give yourself to that of an unselfish prayer and praying for others, God will administer to your needs. More times than not, he will. Amen. I want to say what a beautiful sight to see these young ladies here in the front row. Still. I miss Mary, it is. I miss Mary, I miss Kenya. You tell them girls we miss them, okay? Will you do that for me? Am I doing well? Am I remembering the names correctly? Oh, well, thank God. <laughs> Miracles never cease. <laughs> Diane, you're quiet. You're often sitting to yourself alone. There's very little said in regard to you. But you're loved here, Diana. You're loved here. And if there's anything this pastor wants of you, it's, it's just for you to feel after the presence of the Lord and, and know that God is as real to you as he would be to anyone else. Amen. Oh, what it would do for many of us just to go out of our way and greet them that we rarely ever greet. Huh? Well, Pastor, and as Brother Stephen would call me, Brother Pastor. Brother Pastor? Pastor? You just don't know. I just don't jive with some folks. I'm going to tell you. You better learn how to jive with them here. We all won't ever jive with each other completely. Amen. But thank God for those moments to where that we do connect. Our final point of connection will always be Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. You get out a little earlier today. It's just right at noon. You'll be able to go. Miracles never cease. Leave it to my secretary. I, brother Tate, you better take back all those words you said about Deborah moments ago, okay? <laughs> uh, let's all stand to our feet in closing. Let's sing this chorus together, shall we? Well, let's, let's just minister to the Lord. Let's minister to the King. And He is free. Brush of angels' wings. I see glory, see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in His place. By the way, it's good to have Tammy Ferguson with us here this morning. Sing it. Surely the presence. to have Levi and Dakota here this morning as well.